Today we've got a lot of snow in England. Well, for England it's a lot of snow. And s snow, which is solid water, frozen water, is really very interesting from a chemical point of view. One of the problems about snow and ice and what's affecting us here in England at the moment is that when the snow falls on the ground you want to clear it away quickly so that people can drive around and carry on normal life. And it would be enormously difficult to freeze the to unfreeze the water with flame throwers or something like that because as soon as you stop heating it would cool down again and freeze. Salt, sodium chloride, consists of ions Na plus and Cl minus. And when they dissolve in water, the solution of sodium chloride has a lower freezing point, considerably lower, several degrees lower than pure water. So for, by putting salt on the road, you then lower the melting point and so the ice melts and cannot freeze again. It's even better if you use calcium chloride because calcium chloride has twice as many chloride ions for the calcium as sodium chloride does and is even more effective. So in really cold countries like Russia they often use calcium chloride because you need less kilos of calcium chloride <coughs> to get the same effect than you would with sodium chloride. Let's begin with water. Water is H2O and it has two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. And you can say it's shaped like a letter V. Now, in ice and snow, we get the same arrangement of water molecules, though a light snowflake looks quite different from a solid lump of ice that might be in your glass of orange juice. And in both cases, what happens is that the two hydrogen atoms on the water bond to the oxygen of other water molecules and at the same time this oxygen atom gets two bonds from two other water molecules. So in the atmosphere I'm going to throw it. Uh, so ice and snow have the same arrangement of molecules inside but what they look on outside is different. And the reason is because snow is formed by water vapour in the clouds freezing to form crystals without forming liquid at all. And so they produce these very nice hexagonal shapes. And um, this one I like, it squeaks. <coughs> and um, the precise shape is different from every crystal that's formed. Many of them are misshapen, but every so often you get one that is a perfect hexagon. You can see this book over here. <coughs> the book which was published many years ago, at the beginning of the last century, is absolutely full of structures of different snow crystals. And every snow crystal has a different structure. Most of them look just squashed and not very nice but when you get a nice hexagonal one it's an absolutely perfect hexagon and in ice what happens, the ice that you make in your fridge or freezer, what happens is you take liquid water which you just remove the heat with the fridge and it begins to form a solid. So the difference is that snow freezes from the atmosphere, vapour of the water in the atmosphere is going straight to the solid. Martin, how come here in all this snow we're not seeing all those crystals though? I can't see the crystals. Why, well, why, why is that? Well, there are two reasons. One is that these are rather small, but also because you really have to see the crystals properly. You have to catch one as it's coming down and even so, most of them don't look right. I once saw one when I was having a picnic on a hillside in the north of England and it just landed on my sleeve and it was big enough so I could see the hexagonal structure straight away. 
but often the snow crystals are too small or in England they tend to be rather wet so they begin to melt and so this is rather a mushy mess compared to the nice dry snow crystals that you might get otherwise. You can see I don't have a hat and it's about to snow but like a real chemist I've got my own solution to the problem. I've got a nice umbrella which <coughs> has the periodic table on it and so I'll be alright when the snow starts because I can use my umbrella.